Today on the channel, we are having a look at The Phantom, issue number 1972, a classic reprint plus brand new sequel, a colour special celebrating the first 2,000 issues. Yes, this comic book has just came out in the last couple of days. It came out on Thursday of this week, and we're having a look at it. This has to be one of the biggest moments in comic book history in Australia at this current time. And the cover art is by Shane Foley the, and his colorist Sarge. And it was, this cover must have been done back in 2023. And it is just a very representant of the time period that we're going to be having a look at. And, of course, this isn't, this comic book video of The Phantom, 2000, celebrating the first 2,000 issues of The Phantom, published by a few publications. This video, looking at this comic book, isn't a review. I'm not reviewing this comic book at all. I'm just having an overview of it. I'm having a look at it, because many people across the world, haven't even seen this book, haven't even looked at it. Many Australians only picked this Phantom comic book up on Thursday, and some even, if they've already received it, they've already received it by, like, Tuesday of this week. And I was having a, I, I was having a look on Facebook. I've been on Facebook, and there has been so many times where... Early in the on in the week, you have a look at and you try and try and if it's a phantom comic that's coming out on that week, you try and miss it. You try and miss looking at the cover. You you try and make sure that you're not even looking at it at all. Because it just it it just ruins the whole excitement of it all. And so let's have a look at it. Hundred pages of absolute awesomeness. I have two copies of this book in my collection at this current time. We have one that will never be reopened. We have, This one will never be read. It will never be reopened. And we have the one that I will read. I will review on the channel very, very soon. And without further ado, let's just have a look at this. Because this is history. Absolutely history. Is why I brought two of the same copy of the same comic. So the first story we have seen, we see, is the Maharaja's Daughter. It's the 22nd Phantom Daily Story, written by Lee Falk and drawn by Wilson McCoy. Published in August, published August 28th, 1945, until March 24th, 1945. Last published by Few in Black and White in issue number 1897 in the Collector's Replica number 28 in 2021. Presented here first in the first time by in colours by Ivan Peterson. Followed by a brand new sequel story, Royal Hero by Shane Foley. Now I haven't even I haven't even looked at this book. So these are the first time this is the first time I'm actually looking inside of this book. I'm going to be so enjoying myself in reading this fine publication. Look at it. Colours. Ivan Peterson always does a well, very, very well, good, good job on the colours for the Phantom. He's been doing it for a good while too, so he's got a lot of history. Whether it's 80 years of history to deal with the Phantom, I, I'm guessing it's probably 60 of that. But look at those colours, they are so fine. They are so great. Now, I'm going to say this, Ivan Peterson has got to be, if not the best, one of the all-time best colorists 
to color the phantom that gets published. I, now I've just said that this is this has got to be the pinnacle of coloring the phantom. Two thousand issue, two thousand edition of the Phantom being published in Australia. Amazing feat. An amazing feat. Now, a few publications, if you didn't know this, obviously you're going to because you gotta read this comic book if you pick it up. Now, a few publications first published The Phantom in... They first published The Phantom on the 9th of September in 1948. So, in 1948, Australia and... Well, World War Two had just ended three years prior to that. And, and to say that that was... A, it, it's a big involvement in publishing books whether you're not even not going to know whether it's going to succeed or not. And to publish in the late 40s, late 40s, is just another amazing feat. Like, Phantom back in those days would have been coming out a monthly, monthly. And nowadays it's coming out fortnightly. And which is, which is just another showing to say that few publications have withstand so much adversary throughout the last 75 years of publishing in Australia. Like, publishing The Phantom, yeah, you might... Publishing The Phantom and publishing books, yeah, you might go around and you might stay around for, like, 10 years or 20 years, and if that, you might even be only around for, like, 5 or 10, or 4 or 6. It was like, a very, very small margin. And few publications have been publishing The Phantom consistently for 75 years and this year alone they celebrate 2000 issues 2000 editions of the phantom in australia 1948 till 2024 how how amazing and i have <laughs> i've only been reading the phantom for eight years like there is some people in the world that have a full all collection of you, the Phantoms. I, I, I've talked to many people across uh, across my adventures, and they have said that if it's a very, very amazing thing to have a full, complete collection of the Phantom from few, and even if you, you've, you're like me, and you've just been coming in, and you've just ha been collecting the Phantom for eight years. There are some people out there, and they are they are diehard collectors. They've been collecting the Phantom for 40, 60 years. Same as Ivan Peterson. I'm pretty sure he's been collecting over 60 plus years of him being on planet Earth. And I think the Phantom, I think the Phantom, Phantom would be very, very sorely missed without colours. Because you mainly think of the Phantom as it being published in black and white. Um, if you're in Australia, it's been published in black and white for a very, very long time until they changed that. And I think without the, if the Phantom wasn't published in colours, like I've I've said many times before that the Phantom is just it just goes so much better in black and white. But the Phantom would be sorely missed if he wasn't published in colours from time to time. But, again, you've got to get those colours right. You've got to have the right pigments and all that sort of technical work done right so that the reading experience is fully... is fully there, if you can... It's engaging, pretty much. And I always say that colours add to a Phantom comic. They're not meant to take away from the story that you're reading. And black and white, but black and white is, it's versatile, it's reliable, and you know what you're going to get every single time of the week, every single time of the day. But this is just an amazing feat for a few publications to be publishing, now published 
2000 editions of the Phantom. And I'll keep saying it because without this kind of history, we don't have few publications. We do not have 75 years of the Phantom being published in Australia. We don't have auctions. We don't have Phantom Manubilita being distributed in the last couple of sec last couple of pages in a Phantom comic. None of that is possible if the few publications doesn't publish the Phantom. And yeah. Oh yeah, and we're also into a new story. It's like, a, it's a sequel for the original Maharaja's daughter. And I, I feel like when few publications create these sequels, I feel, I feel like sometimes it's really validated. Like the story is meant to be there, but other times they create a sequel and it's out of nothing. Like, the story doesn't add to the story that you've just read. Like, it just, it takes away from the original story. And I, if you're publishing a sequel, you're making a sequel from the original story. Every time you do it, it's got to at least add to the original story in some way. They've got to be able to find some sort of pathway to the next story because I I guess that's with everything isn't that just with the TVs and the TV shows they leave out loopholes but sometimes original stories they just need to be set they just need to be just left there for history and for people to read and appreciate sometimes sometimes stories new stories to do with the originals they're just made out of they just made out of oh we'll just make this because we just feel like it it we will it feels right to do so and sometimes the movies when they do it with movies sometimes they get it right and sometimes yeah no it turns out terribly oh we've also got another we've got a story here by Cy Barry I didn't actually, I, I was too busy talking to actually notice that there was a new story. <laughs> Apologise for that. Oh yeah, I think I know what this story is. This story was published in the Phantom and Christmas album last year. No, it wasn't last year, it was the year before. It was published in this book here. I'm pretty sure, or was it published uh, last year? I, I can't really remember, but this panel here is very, very famous. This is a very, very well-recognized panel, and I, I know this from somewhere because I've seen it in the past, and uh, I, it's, give me a sec, it's here somewhere, I can remember it, it's not that one, not that one, I'm pulling out all the old big, big budget books, and I'm, having trouble trying to find it but I think I'm pretty sure it has something to do with the Phantom Mant books but yeah just look at that color it, it just looks so good it looks so good time and time again Ivan Peterson just wows us with color like, how many times in Australia have we seen his work? Not many. Not many times that we've seen his work. Even a long time, around the world, you don't really see his work unless you're in, like, the Norwegian lands or <laughs> the Viking land. <laughs> oh, yeah, and we've also got another story, Man and Beast, 
part three, done by Andrew Consonant and Jason Paulos, and edited by Glenn Ford. Now I'm just I'm gonna flick through this because I I am very excited to see where this story new story will lead because it ended on a cliffhanger last time in the last part and I don't really want to spoil myself because I don't I don't think I need to read that. <laughs> so we've also this is the back cover for this book. But it's also got, in his haste, the phantom does not notice the old Maharaja lying in the ditch, plus the fence, and of man and beast, part three. Now, I have yet to read this book, so I don't, I don't have an entire, entire opinion on this book yet. I am yet to read this book, but this has just been an overview of of what the 2000th issue, 2000 edition of The Phantom looks like, published this week, published this week in Australia. So, as always, thank you for watching this video, and as always, keep Phantom Caving, stay safe, and you'll see me on the channel very, very soon. I'm coming back, I'm, <laughs> I'm not leaving you for um strawberries and blueberries but i am certainly coming back next week on the channel see you bye